place. What I will do then is proceed to use the Statlock securing device that is attached to my Foley catheter bag. That is also in a protective plastic covering. And I will remove that. first proceed to place at the bifurcation or the Y the catheter properly into the device. The arrow on the clasp needs to be pointing towards the insertion site. It will only fit in one way. The catheter portion will fit onto the left hand side, the balloon portion, or onto the right hand side, I'm sorry, the balloon port onto the left and then I will clamp that shut, making sure that I don't have any occlusion of my tubings. I will then, without pulling on the catheter, have the patient lower their leg, and I will proceed to bring the device to the thigh, the front of the thigh, and then I will go up an inch so that I have about a one inch slack on my catheter. I need to prep the skin. I will first use an alcohol wipe and I will prep the area going in a motion with the patient's hair if they have any on their leg and I will cleanse an area larger than the size of the device. I will allow that to dry fully and then I will use the skin protective wipe that was supplied with the device and I will again cleanse over the same area as I did with the alcohol wipe. I will need to let that dry 10 to 15 seconds. Once that is completely dry, again keeping the arrow up towards the insertion site, I will place the pad onto the area that I have prepped. I will then pull back the plastic backing, paper backing, I'm sorry, and I will pull that off one half of the pad. Then I will secure that portion to the leg. Then I will proceed to do that with the second portion, tearing that off, and then proceeding to secure that portion to the leg. So my stat lock device is now in place. You will need to send a urine, sterile urine specimen to the lab when any Foley catheter is inserted. So included in your kit will be your sterile specimen container. You will open up the lid. You will not touch the inside of the rim or the inside rim of the lid. I will then, as long as I'm not touching the bottom portion of the green port that remains sterile, I will place my specimen container and I will turn the opening till I have urine coming into my container, again not touching the rim of the container. Once I have enough urine, I will clamp that back off by turning it the opposite way, carefully pick up my lid and I will place that in place. There are labels that were provided with the kit and what I will do is I will first label my urine specimen and I will put the date, the time, and my initials and I will place that onto the container and that will be immediately sent to the lab. I can then proceed to taking off my gloves, performing hand hygiene, and I will utilize the labels that are included with the kit. I will put the date and time of insertion and my initials. I can either use the square one or the long one, and I will place them 
If I use the square one, I can place it right on the catheter bag, right in this area. And if I use the longer one, I can place it on the tubing in that area. That way everyone will know at a glance when this catheter was inserted and who did it. And that helps with infection control issues. I'm going to then lower the bag. We always want to keep this below the level of the patient's bladder. We do not want to place this on the side rails because we could injure the patient and or the catheter. So I'm going to place it on the actual frame of the bed. Some beds come with actual hooks that you can utilize. I also want to be very careful not to ever allow the bag to touch the ground. I can then proceed to removing my equipment. Cleansing the patient and, and performing the following steps. We're going to briefly show you the difference between inserting the catheter on a male patient than a female. We already, the patient is placed a little differently in bed. You just want their thighs to be spread apart. You do not need to have them with their legs, their thighs out and their knees dropped. The drape with the shiny side down will be placed over the patient's thighs and under the penis. The fenestrated drape, when you're utilizing that, will actually be placed again over the patient's thighs and with the penis coming through. When you perform pericare, you will hold the penis in an upright perpendicular position. You will begin at the urinary meatus and you will go in circular motions outward and downward and then you will discard and then you will repeat that with all three of the wipes. While lubricating the catheter, you actually will lubricate five to seven inches for a male. And then as you cleanse the penis with the betadine, if the patient is uncircumcised, you will need to retract the foreskin prior to cleansing. Again, you will do the same motion with each of the betadine swabs as you did with the pericure. And when you insert the catheter, you will hold the penis in an upright perpendicular to the body. You will ask the patient to take deep breaths. You will have them bear down as if they are voiding and you will insert the catheter using a rotating circular motion if needed. You will, on the male patient, insert the catheter all the way down to the Y or the bifurcation area. Once you have that inserted and your balloon inflated, you will then pull back just as you did on the female to verify that you have correct security. If you have an uncircumcised male, you will need to place the foreskin back over the head of the penis. And that is the difference in catheterizing a male patient than a female.